All right, ladies and gentlemen, so Alabama fans, make sure you guys get your cigars ready. Um, Tennessee fans, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how you guys feel right now. Uh, this is, what, the 14th time in a row that Alabama has beat the Tennessee Volunteers. Um, but, yeah, Alabama defeats L uh, Tennessee 48-17, to a great victory for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Um, there was a lot of improvements for the defense that I'll be talking about, but the biggest loss I got to get right into is Jalen Waddle. Uh, Waddle is my favorite player. Um, ever since he came out of uh, Escapo, uh, out of uh, Escapo, um, I, I was just I was ecstatic about this kid. I knew that he was going to be a game changer. He reminded me so much of David Palmer that I'm like, yeah, this this kid is going to bring a lot to the table. And um, you know, he he waited two years. Even he waited two years, even though we knew that you know those two years he was the most explosive player in all of college football. And now you're missing that presence. You're missing that that explosive edge. You're missing that 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 deep verticality threat. You're missing one of the shiftiest, quickest, you know, quickest receivers you're going to see in college football. Um, and um, this is this is not only going to hurt Alabama, but um, I, I don't know. It, it just hurts me, um, probably because you know how long I've kind of supported this kid, and the fact that now you got a guarantee, literally a guaranteed first round pick, in my opinion, that's now out for the rest of the year. And uh, it affects his draft status, and you know, you know, and, and and hopefully, hopefully, it doesn't really affect the rest of his career because those type of significant injuries, you just, you just hope and pray that he can get back to a hundred percent, and that he can he, he can be that same player that he was. Um, um, so hopefully, it's not a game changer to his life. That's the one thing I just hope that it just doesn't happen. So Jalen Waterman, hope you get better, and hope you have a speedy recovery. Definitely, uh, you know, you know, his family too. Just wishing that his family. And um, and him also, you know, you know, well, uh, uh, it's just hard to put into words right now. I'm just it, it sucks for the both of those guys. But again, I just hope that his family and Jalen Waddle will be will be fine. And um, you know, praying for those guys. So anyway, uh, talking about this game real quick, uh, the defense was defense actually showed some improvement. Um, Bama's defense on the defensive line didn't get dominated um, as far as gap assignments and really when it came to communication, these guys were were I thought were pretty good against the run. Um, again, they were very, very physical. They didn't let the Tennessee offensive line dictate them. And you know, Tennessee's offensive line has four or five star players. Trey Smith is a first round pick, and you know, Darnell Wright and Cade Mays, and I forgot the other, uh, I forgot the other kid's name is. But again, all promising players. And um, you know, I feel like this Tennessee offensive line is going to get better. But you know, we've seen Tennessee against some of the, you know, against some of the teams. They can run the football very effectively. Quarterback wise, the Garantano's no shock they had a bad game. Garantano was just he's horrible, right? No, just no disrespect to the kid, but he's horrible. But you know, Alabama took the running element out of this game, and um, that's one thing that I think as an Alabama fan you got to be proud of, or that you got to look for in the future is that hey, you know, this defense they they can play against the run, right? Georgia and um, Ole Miss showed that you know. That Alabama can definitely run on, but this game showed that Alabama can definitely stop the run. They can definitely play up to their potential, and um, I was very proud of the effort that we displayed tonight on the defensive front. I thought Daniel Wright had a better showing than he did last week um, as far as effort, because that dude was getting punked. He really, you know, he was getting punked as far as not really stepping up and being a physical football player. I thought that did. I thought that Wright was a lot more physical than he was. I would say all season long. So I really like the effort that he put. He put up. He put up a much better effort than he did in this game, at least against the run. I thought Dylan Moses and Christian Harris were really good against the run today. Again, were they perfect? No, but they showed flashes. They showed that they have. Again, they showed that they had the the potential to be those players that we kind of expect them to be. I want to see these players get better in pass coverage, but against the run, again, I, I love the promise. That That's one thing you can hope for is that you see it. Now can we see it uh, from a more cons a more consistent effort? That's something that we're going to find out about, but at least we saw the promise today. Um, I thought that Malachi Moore had a phenomenal game. I thought Malachi Moore had a phenomenal game. He made some plays in the secondary against the pass. Of course, he had that strip fumble and returned it for a touchdown. I thought that Malachi Moore played really, really well today as well. Um, again, there were some promising guys. You know, Patrick Tan got beat, especially for the one for the touchdown, but I thought that overall wise, Patrick Tan had a pretty good game. Um, Brian Branch showed promise as well. Um, so, again, this was, a, this was just a game for Alabama to show that they can play defense, right? Normally... From you know you you know you're not really you know from an Alabama defense, you know you don't really expect to hear those words. You you already knew that Alabama can play defense. This year you kind of want to see can we play defense, and you know, you know how are we going to be moving forward? 
Um, and obviously against Tennessee, it shows problems. We didn't let this team score more than 20 points on us. Again, Kentucky did a much better job against us, but I feel like Kentucky's just a better defense. Um, but we show promise. Um, but switching over to the offensive side of the ball, again, Mac Jones, I thought had a really, really good game. Again, not five, not 400 yards. I think he actually came close to it. But Mac Jones had a pretty efficient day for the most part. I thought Najee Harris, he had 26 carries for over 150 yards, was used very well. I thought the offensive line did a great job. Deontay Brown was out in the second half. I wonder, I don't know what the status is for that. Hopefully he can get back as soon as possible because you can notice the difference from when Chris Owens had to move into center and Dickerson had to be kicked out into guard. I, you, you can just notice the difference. So hopefully Deontay Brown can be back into the lineup. Hopefully he's not anything serious. Maybe it's just maybe Nick Saban is just taking precautions because Alabama had a lot of injuries in this game. Um, but hopefully we can see Deontay Brown back. Uh, John Mechie had a phenomenal game. I mean, John Mechie had a phenomenal game for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Over 150 yards receiving. Um, showed that he's a special receiver. John Mechie's IQ at the receiving position is great. He knows when players are going to jam him up. He knows when players are take are going to uh, try to you know try to take him out and try to, try to take him out in the play. Right, whether they're going to try to push him to the inside to the outside, he knows exactly what to do. He knows ex he knows exactly what to do against uh, against the defenders. Um, you know, so I got to give John Metchie a lot of credit, man. His IQ at the, as a receiver is phenomenal. Again, he's not the fastest. He's not the quickest. He doesn't have the best hands. But he has shown that he's a reliable number two receiver. If not, he can potentially fill in that number one role once Devon St. Smith leaves. Um, so, John, so and, and Bama needs it, especially when you're losing the most explosive player and arguably the second best receiver on this football team. Someone's got to step up. And, you know, whether, you know, with the loss of Waddle, is this going to change Alabama's offense? Is this, you know, what, what's going to happen here? So, um, Meshi stepping up, I think, showed a lot of promise that Bama does have the playmakers on the offensive side of the ball to still be explosive. Because in order for Alabama to at least contend for a championship, that offense needs to be damn near perfect. We all know how the defense plays. That offense has to be perfect. And... We don't want to go back to being a one a one dimensional type of team. So the fact that with Lotto gone, with Waddle gone, and we showed some promise with their offensive playmakers, I'm very happy about that. Slade Bolden stepped up as the number three receiver. Again, he doesn't bring anything special to the to the team, right? He's not the quickest, he's not the fastest, he doesn't have the greatest hands, he does make mistakes. But Slade Bolden stepped up today, 94 yards. He was reliable in certain in, in certain areas, especially in the middle of the field. Um, whether if it was a safety on him or a nickel back on him or a linebacker on him, Slade Bolden made the plays necessary to. He did drop a touchdown catch from Bryce Young, but Slade Bolden had 90, close to 100 yards this game. So again, you got it. So as a Bama fan, you got to love the fact that Slade Bolden was able to make some plays and that the fact that he can be a reliable um, receiver for this football team. But uh, moving forward, man, it, it sucks because when you, it, if Alabama has a rematch against Georgia, you just saw the effect that Jalen Waddle had against that defense. You saw how Georgia had had played Waddle, right? Whenever Georgia played aggressive, Waddle and this and this offense made them pay. Whenever they played conservative, it opened up Alabama's run game. I mean, Waddle is a difference maker that 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 the, that defensive coordinators in certain defenses has to respect. Like the the philosophy of of that defense had to change that game. During that game, well, you know, as they had to try to make adjustments just to respect Waddle's speed and the fact that Alabama has other receivers that can also take the top off your defense as well. So, it, as far as the game plan moving forward against other defenses, it's going to be interesting to see if defenses, you know, as far as the level of respect for Alabama's vertic uh, vertical game, is it going to decrease or is it kind of or is that respect going to remain the same? That's just something to definitely watch out for. Um, but, you know, going against some of the better defenses that has a that has a much faster secondary, you know, again, Mechie is not the fastest, Smith is not the fastest, but Waddle is that player that defense has had to respect. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how everything goes. I would love to see Javon Baker play. Uh, Javon Baker is a phenomenal route runner as well, and he has great hands, and he brings something special to the team that maybe Slade Bolden doesn't require. Um I would love to see Javon Baker get more playing time. Again, Bama's receiving death, uh, death uh, as far as the death chart goes. It's not. It's not. It's not the greatest um, compared to how it was last year. Um, I think next year. I think Alabama has a bunch of receivers that can make plays, and who knows? Maybe Waddle can return back as well. But it's going to be interesting to see how you know how Alabama changes. Right? Is Alabama going to be more run heavy? Is Alabama going to continue to go back to 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 just to throw them the ball over thirty times a game? That's just something that we got to find out. And are they going to take more shots vertically down the field, especially with the loss of Jalen Waddles? So that's something that we have to find out. 
Obviously, Alabama moving forward, they're going to be playing against some, some good defenses, especially against Kentucky's defense. That's a good example of a fast secondary that I am very interested to see how Kentucky plays this Alabama football team. But besides that, you know, Florida doesn't have the greatest defense. LSU doesn't have the greatest defense. Mississippi State doesn't have the greatest defense. So we won't see that challenge until Kentucky, maybe Auburn, and if Alabama rematches Georgia in the SEC championship game. But besides that, Alabama had a great win. That's all you can hope for. You know, everything will play out, and we'll just see what happens. If this will affect Alabama's chance to not just win the SEC championship or go to the college football playoffs or national championship, but win the West. We'll see if Waddle's injury has any impact um, as far as Alabama contending for it. So, anyway, we'll find out about it. But anyway, guys, Jan Someone 6, a.k.a. Jan Sports. I'll check you guys out later. Make sure to have your cigars if you're an Alabama fan. If you're a Tennessee fan, I don't know what to tell you, man. I guess you guys can just smoke a pretzel or something. But anyway, I'm out. Peace.